Yeah, so that's where you hide, cat. Yeah. Hey, cat. That's where you jump down whenever I play with this big capacitor, huh? You get scared and jump off there. Hey, cat. You know, viewers, I hooked these up to power yesterday off camera. This seems to work all right. I think I had this had a similar problem, probably to those smart meters I got last time. They weren't, uh, wasn't sending power or something to the modem in here. This all works as a standalone meter. I can reset this to zero between loads, have it as a portable meter. That's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to hook it up on a little board like I did with my other smart meter and make another portable meter set up with this one. Be all nice and portable. Be a really good version of those uh, digital Chinese plug in ones you buy at Bunnings or Dixby for Electronics. This would be a lot more better built than that one. Looking for a little uh, carry around thing. Let's uh, look, open it up and take a look what's inside. See what it, I've already had a peek. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Same with this one. This had plastic seals on it. So this was the easiest to uh, open up. This is pretty straightforward inside too. So let's take a look inside these. Okay, have you always got the screws removed? Two main contact screws. Then you pull this little cover off. Maybe a screw there and a screw there. Got a nice solenoid there. Now that's a magnet. Interesting stuff. Two sets, two coils in there. Open this up. And there's the inside. I only caught a. The only being plugged in for 30 seconds to set the time. And it charges up so quickly. And there's how it does it. The big NEC. It's a 5.5 volt 1 farad super capacitor. So no batteries to leak. So that's why these things will last for ages and never buckle up. It's the advantage of super capacitors. They don't leak like a battery will and ruin the whole circuit board. Got a Samwire, Samwire literally up there, another, uh, let's say, Kyosonic. Only 85 degrees Celsius though. Oh, it'll be 105 degrees Celsius, because these things usually get cooked in meter boxes in the summertime, in meter boxes in the sun. Surprised that they use that lower temperature added caps. Yeah, they're all Samwire, them ones. There's some uh, lot of chips there. National Semiconductor Chip. Zoom into that a bit. Tripod makes it easier. See if I can bring it up closer to the camera here. Very careful here. See what those chips are. Notice the little connectors here, go to the solenoid to click the switch, contacts open and closed, S, T and R, they go to your LCD with the buttons on it. Very well made. And there's some data there. WF energy controls, which is Warburton Funky. Single channel time switch, 14072 revision, 6 issue B. Then you got a little fuse here. Big MOV. We got a high quality cord, AccuTemp by Mills Elastomer Silicon. So it's high temperature rated cord, that. high quality components on this thing. You can even put another civic, uh, civic capacity on it if you wanted to double the, um, the backup power to, uh, time. There must be some sort of regulator. BD, BD139. Yeah, that must be part of what drives the LCD. It's a 76635 and ACPA under that. Quite straightforward, single-sided PCB. 
pretty well made stuff. Nice uh, fabricated aluminium faceplate. Now let's look at the uh, meter. Okay, so I'll be looking under this terminal cover here. Um, you've got your lead here where your lead comes out. The motor will plug in there, RS232, another connector there. And the little motor will just sit in there. So it's like the um, communications modules in the smart meters. Just plugs in under here. Sits in this little compartment here in the terminal cover. ABS plastic. Bake a lot, case, the backing, and this is probably carbonate. Already undone the screws. And the should just clip off. Yep, it does. Hmm, more cheap plastic. Got an infrared receiver and transmitter there for programming. Then you reset in your alternative cycle three buttons. Kill it our impulse light and your three potential LEDs indicators. And that I'm not quite sure what that's for. Turn something here on, which could have, there's no option to turn it off, it's only to turn it on, that's it. There's no other pin here. And this I have to find out what that does. Probably to do with programming and uh, selecting certain features of the meter. This little clip on bit's interesting. Actually soldered down. It's got a heap of look, what looks like update couples or something here. Hmm. There's something to screw over looking underneath here. And that's it. Nothing much. Nothing much at all. You zoom on that. Got some logic here, some capacitors, Nippon Chemicon KME series 25 volt 3300 microfarad, you might be able to see it. There we go, 3300 microfarad Nippon Chemicon. Then this one is a 105, they're both 105 degrees Celsius rated, 048KA. It's a special type anyway, 16 volt 4700 microfarad. Doesn't look like any made by any consumer electronics brand I've actually seen. Oh, BC the brand. Backup lithium battery there for backup. It's a 3.6 volt battery. Quartz of the clock. And these things here, H double one, A V one. V five one nine Q, a lot of those things. Only more connectors there. Another circuit board here. One MOV for each of the phases, which is this little circuit board in the bottom here. That's your input board there. Switch mode power supply on this side, some regulators. And that runs half the meter through here. It's made by Ampy email metering. Q4ANSI meter. 2005, it's made. That's the era. Yeah, this is back when Ampy was only owned email. Now Ampy themselves have been bought out by uh, Lannis and Gaia. There's a CT, so they connect to here. See the main seat current transformers there. They connect over here. Yeah. Dave James did an um, EDMI one of these types of uh, meters, a teardown. This one is pretty similar. Well, uh, yeah, you gotta go and let it picked up in there. They go up in here somewhere to this chip to pick up the current reading. So that's got to do a current reading. It's a PSA 1746-3. Zoom in on that. No, come on camera. Need a macro lens. There's some logic or the firmware's on this chip here. Second of the 6005. Little uh, cord looking in uh, transformer there, fair right. Got an L494 DVS. That must be a regulator as well. This one here is a off the camera that, uh, frame. Down here, little driver, I think, for this transformer. That's a top 
T2TY. Nothing much in here at all. Rectifier diodes there. Pretty much what it is inside this thing. Not much at all. Not as interesting as the old analog meters. Rod microfarad MKP capacitor. Good for a ZVS. Nice size too. Some noise filtering in there. Pretty high quality stuff. Look at the CTs are. Everything's just welded in there. Spot welded, not bolted to the to, not bolted to the brass um, uh, terminal block like the older ones were. That's all there is. Not much at all inside this thing. Okay. Yeah, this is what drives the LCD as well. This chip here. The LCD goes in here. Okay. Yeah, not much on this thing. Pretty simple stuff. Just before I plug this thing in and demonstrate it, I better go and feed this cat. Hmm? You're hungry, aren't you? Let's go give you some food, eh? Let's plug it in. There you go, boots up. Ready, set. Zero, zero, 009. Zero, zero, 034, the reading. More power factor reading for each phase. Volts for phase one, phase two, and phase three. <sighs> hmm. Not sure if the reset button actually resets the reading or what. Doesn't seem to do anything, but they're usually lockable. They put um, they put seals through these, so you can't uh, go touching buttons. There's some specs on it: three times two forty, four fifteen volt, three phase four wire, five amp or fifteen amp ace of the CTs, fifty hertz. Test: 0.11 one hour per impulse. 0.11 one hour per impulse and square equals one one hour per impulse. The flash of the arm light. Display test. Just missed it. Top Q4 for 2005. Total kilowatt hour. 13,299.6 is the total reading there. 8,794.1 on rate A it's got. Okay. I keep going through the alternative menus here and not letting it get to its um, show me the reading. So what I'm doing there is just um, going to this hidden menu that normally when it's sealed you won't be able to get to. I need to cycle itself back through now. Let's see what it tells me on its normal operating when it cycles through. Reset. Yeah, press the up button, it's going to stay in that little menu for a bit now. And hang on. To get out of it, that little ART disappears. So when that little uh, ALT disappears, you're out of that menu. So we'll go back to cycling to its normal thing. But there's a lot of menus here. No load, so there's no power factor. Alright, so it won't change anyway. Try and cycle back out of it. Run them and go back out of that menu. Maybe I'll turn it off and restart it. Okay, back to what's normal uh, thing. And even tells you your debt too. Let's 
state. That's right. Sixteen thirty-eight. That's the time. Yep, four thirty-eight p.m. First reading. It's in pretty good nick and hasn't hasn't got much um, read, of a reading on it since two thousand and five. Eighty-seven hundred and four hundred and ninety-four. Nothing on that rate. Right, C, 4,495.5 kilowatt hours. Total, 13,269 is the total reading. So it's only done 13,000 kilowatt hours since 2005, this meter. Hasn't had much use. And there we are, that's about all it does. Nothing too exciting. Good little uh, portable um, digital meter. It's a much better quality than those little Chinese plug-in meters. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching. You see there, they went from the good old BAZs, that same company, to these. Boring digital electronic meter. Yeah, nothing like the old BAZs.